Okay, well, good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to the fifth in TTG's weekly series of Agent Matters discussions, uh, which take place every Tuesday. Uh, those of you who tune in weekly will know that we've tuned in uh, five minutes later than we usually do today, uh, so that we could honour the minute silence, uh, which took place at 11, to remember NHS workers who tragically lost their lives to coronavirus. Uh, and I think I speak for everyone on the panel when I say that our thoughts are with them and their families. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Agent Matters, it's a chance for us to catch up with representatives from travel agencies across the UK um, uh, to check in with them, see how they're doing um, and talk through some of the challenges and successes that they've had uh, since the coronavirus crisis uh, began. Uh, so just a reminder before we kick off and I introduce my fantastic panel uh, that if you're joining us live on Facebook and you've got any questions just post them in the queries uh, in the in the comments box uh, and we'll do our best to answer them during the session. So this week we are going to be focused on marketing uh, which is just one of many elements that agents need to be thinking about right now uh, and we're going to be finding out how this panel communicating Ooh, we lost Gary <laughs> oh no I am here I am here <laughs> okay. um, we're gonna be finding out yeah how, how this panel has been communicating with their clients during this tricky time um, as well as hearing some of their tips and their sort of do's and don'ts for other agents um, so I'm Abba Dunsby uh, acting features editor at TTG and I'm joined today by Kiri DeLay, uh, marketing and social media manager at the Mid Counties Co-op's personal travel agents, uh, Kate Holroyd uh, who's a home worker and founder of Strawberry Holidays based in Lancashire and James B. Agree, managing director of Meon Valley Travel in Hampshire. So morning all, thanks very much for joining me today. Um, Great. So can I just kick off by asking how you all are uh, and how the last few weeks have been for you all? Um, James, should we start with you? Oh, cabin fever is a new phrase I've learned <laughs> over the last few weeks, but I've never been so busy. It's quite incredible, really. You expect to come home and I've had these visions in my mind about being at home with all these distractions. And boy, oh boy, do you have to cut yourself from the, off from the outside world. It's uh, quite a, a been a fascinating exercise in productivity. And, uh, and, and a hugely enjoyable one as well. But I don't know how, I don't know how I've got a good tan whilst we've been at it. Working <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for the sunshine, hey? <laughs> yeah, massively. And Kate, how about you? How's it been for you? Yeah, um, pretty much the same, very much cabin fever. I'm very fortunate that I've got a little bit of outdoor space, which has been great for the children. Um, and then it's just the balancing act of my work, because um, obviously I'm self-employed versus my husband, who's a salaried employee for a bank, um, and then the homeschooling as well. Um, but as James says, it's it's been a, a real challenge in productivity and using technology as much as possible to aid. And how about you, Kiri? How's it been? How's it been at the PTAs? Yeah, good. It's um, it's been a roller coaster. I think a roller coaster of emotions, and you know, I think now we get a bit of a grasp of as homeworking agents. We're kind of based at home. I'm on. Uh, this will be my seventh week actually isolating. Um, so you kind of get an understanding of what it's like to work from home, and you know, if anything, it's helped from a technology perspective. Um, but no, it's been it's been really busy, really really busy, which is good. I think when you've got those times when you can just refocus and you've got that that extra time just to have a bit of clarity, you kind of figure out that you're a bit more busier than usual. But no, it's been good. Good, I'm glad. Um, and and from a marketing team specifically, then um, James, have you have you had to put anyone on furlough? Anyone on the marketing team particularly, or what's what's the situation with people working versus people on furlough? We've gone the opposite direction. We've got three uh, disciplines to the business, a leisure division, a uh, corporate division, and a medical emergency assistance division. So we've been right in the heart of the storm as far as repatriations are concerned. Uh, so it's meant that about, uh, we've only furloughed around about 55% uh, of our staff in total. Uh, but the one area where we've spent a load more effort has been on marketing. Uh, right. So we've, we've focused uh, the more effective communication and learned a whole new set of skills as well as we've gone along. So it's been a massive learning curve that's been uh, quite uh, life-affirming, I must admit, 
and being able to recognize that some of this stuff is actually quite good fun as well as hard work. And we've not got to forget those that are furloughed at home who are still keeping in contact and keeping in touch and hopefully safe and well because we're going to need them all safe and well when they come back with a vengeance. Absolutely. Um, and Kiri, how about you? What's the situation like in head office? Have people been put on furlough? And what about in the marketing team? There are two yeah. of you on the marketing team, aren't there? Yeah, so um, there's myself and there's Jason who does online uh, and CRM. Um, for us, we haven't been put on furlough. Um, and kind of in support of the team in the way that we've been handling it you know every day it's kind of been supporting our agents and seeing what we can do to kind of give them the guidance that they need right now because you know if we imagine you know they're, they're really close with their businesses their customers it's that emotional attachment so we really need to kind of give them that guidance and support so you know every day we have a catch-up call at one o'clock where we go through our own individual areas and we update the team on the challenges what's been working well and i think if you know we were in a position where we were put on furlough we wouldn't be able to kind of give that support and just help them leverage on other bits so you know mm -hmm. we have been working together and kind of picking up areas which we're probably not that confident in but you know it's good to kind of upskill and i guess the other side of it is that you know we're part of a bigger picture with Mid Counties Cooperative. They've obviously got their food stores, they've got funerals. So there's that other side that we're quite thankful for that, you know, travel's going to be a bit of a sticky situation, but we've got that part of being a bigger picture that we can rely on at the minute. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we're just kind of, we're here as a team, kind of here fighting the fire together and, uh, yeah, hopefully it kind of stays that way for the next few months. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Um, and Kate, you're obviously a, a one-man band, uh, and I imagine your situation is actually quite similar to a lot of agents in that they might not have a dedicated marketing representative. You're kind of doing it all. So yeah, we wear many hats. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So yeah, how's it been sort of wearing all those different hats and juggling the marketing alongside everything else? Well. In some respects, it's business as usual in that we always wear those many hats. I'm sure that businesses that have had to furlough people and are now taking on those additional responsibilities, that's a little bit different. But certainly, um, you know, managing the, the crisis element of, you know, cancellations and, um, you know, rebookings and all of that kind of thing, it's it's it's. It's, it's finding the motivation to to um, to deal with all that when the revenue is not coming in. That's been one of my biggest challenges, um, you know, being the most honest I can be. Um, but yeah, it's we've always, um, as a one man band, I've always emphasised, you know, a level of service, and I'm dedicated to that. And and you know, it's just making more time than normal. So every day, my first priority every day is checking that forward bookings list. Have I got an update to give to a client? Am I looking out for those next affected departments? Arches. and then once complete then I get my other hats out and I start um you know balancing the rest of the hours of the day which there don't seem to be enough of <laughs> no there never are are there um and so cl clearly these are times like no other um so I wanted to, to actually ask a bit about crisis communications and how you've been dealing with that um Kate what, what what's the strategy been there for you well, firstly, it was identifying appropriate channels to communicate with my clients. Now, as a one man band, I'm really lucky that I have one to one relationships with my clients. So I, you know, took that forward booking list and I said, right, I know for a fact that May King really likes chatting to me on WhatsApp. I know that um, Vicky really wants to speak to me on Twitter messages. And I, I, I made that a priority because I wanted to make sure that the information was getting through um, to them. Um, the other thing I've tried to do is react as quickly as possible so like I say every morning checking that forward booking list so that every every morning I'm on top of things and then on to, and then thirdly I've been doing a weekly communication one email was important update there is no update but it just it helped my clients to get that reassurance that they're still on a wait and see it meant they didn't call me it was just a little bit more proactive um, and then the fi final thing I've done is open my calendar for video chats just so that they can see my face and um, just have that one-to-one -one interaction again that's gone down really well as well good um yeah how about how about you James what's the strategy been for for me on Valley Travel um, it's, a, it's a broad reach, really. What the, the, the most important element for us is to be, just been to keep it human. 
And one of the things that we've all been talking about, and we always go, and I got carried away with business, we are the marketing team, always think about the right way to do things. Um, and one of the greatest things that come out of the whole communication strategy for us is authenticity. Uh, it's amazing how you become irrelevant very quickly as soon as you're trying to sell something to somebody who's not buying right now. Um, so from that point of view, it's keeping it human, upping the communication, but making it relevant and timely, um, and then making sure that it's direct. And because when we're communicating like this, it's personal. It's one-to-one. -one. I'm talking to you right now, not you all. So from that point of view, it's, a, it's been a fascinating uh, experience to be able to work out from a strategy for different divisions. Leslie, you're quite right. We're dealing with the most dangerous creature on the planet, which is a wounded human. Uh, dealing with the fact that the expectations by the media have been given to them as you're going to get the money back within 14 days or else it's breaking the law. And of course, we're the messenger of a, a slightly different message that comes to the outside world. That's been uh, a hugely challenging time for my guys on the front line as far as labor is concerned. And hats off to them for uh, being able to manage that so well and so compassionately for those in the outside world whose livelihoods often have been tipped upside down. And uh, in the business travel world, it's, it's been upping the relevance and timely communication to ensure that people know what's going on, stats, data, knowing that which airlines are moving with where, know it, it's per immediate information and relevant, rather than just the Me Too brigade of trying to tell everybody how clever we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and and Kiri, obviously you advise um, your personal travel agents on, on marketing as well. So what have you been recommending your agents do from a crisis comms point of view? I think it's, it's primarily been on the clarity and key messages. You know, when, you know, and every everyone in the travel industry, they're kind of fighting with, you know, waiting for the, the next updates, seeing what's going to come out from tour operators. So, you know, touching on what James is saying it's keeping that human touch and I think that's one of the main things that you know our home workers have with their customers they have a personal relationship with them so having those key messages and making sure that you know with all our communication plan we've got something which is structured to give them you know when when COVID first came on the scene you know marketing was the first thing that we kind of put on pause because we thought you know, well, we can't be sending out anything to our customers if, you know, we need to give them the right information that they want. And, you know, it's, it's moved so quickly and it's so fluid that we need to kind of give them the right guidance. You know, our team has been endless flow charts, endless, you know, situations for this scenario, situations for that scenario. So, you know, just having that human touch that, you know, what you can have those personal contacts and relationships and conversations in the right way that's, that's needed but you know just making sure that emotional attachment with the kind of crisis communication and you know it the wording does have to be formal in some way so we don't want to lose that you know this is our customer and we don't, we don't want to talk to them in this way we still want to keep it quite nice and, and soft and subtle with them but still get the message across because they do need the reassurance you know when we step out of and I always tend to do this with the marketing I kind of take a step out of my travel agency and think well you know how would joe blogs down the road feel if they didn't get that communication or you know what else would they be needing so it's it's just giving them kind of clarity really and just helping them along the way mm -hmm. okay um and so two or three of you really what what has been the focus marketing wise what kind of activity have you been doing since since the crisis do you want to talk me through some of that um kate should we start with you yeah, great. Uh, one of the things I've been focusing on is to grow my online audience. So whether that's through lead magnets or hand raisers and things like that. And um, a big one for me as well has been showing up consistently. Um, I think, you know, just to show we're still business, not business as usual, but we're still here and we're still helping. Um, adjusting my ideal client, um, sort of I've got an ideal client avatar and I've been adjusting that and thinking about um, what specialisms and where I want to focus in the after. Um, and then I've 
I've, I've got a campaign of um, travel virtually focusing on a destination a week. So this week is Queensland, which has been great from the training videos that you guys have been doing. And um, also um, helping my community, which is Holiday Companion Club. So I've got a meetup group on meetup.com, 1,200 members, all in Lancashire and the Northwest. And it's been about keeping that community going because we would normally have face-to-face -face meetings and getting them on Zoom and just keeping them, because these are solo travellers, they live on their own. So it's been a really important time to, to, to help them as well. To check in with them. Mm -hmm. um, and with the travel virtually, so that is that a Facebook Live um, set up or...? Yeah, well, it's a whole host of things. I've done Spotify playlists to immerse people in the sounds of the destination. It's a daily Facebook Live, notes on Facebook. And then, you know, I, I even did some um, typical cruise photos in my home, around my home. Um, you know, even the, you know, holding a champagne glass on the stairs, you know, you know, the, you know, the type of <laughs> typical cruise photos. And, and did that with some cruise bloggers. So Cruise Mummy and Cruise Lifestyle, Cruise with Ben and David, they got all involved as well so that was really good oh that sounds fun um and um james how about you what what kind of things have you been focusing on marketing wise i'm just exhausted listening to kate and how much she's actually got to <laughs> making me feel inadequate <laughs> no, uh, but no i mean i I've, we've stepped up we've had some great uh, success but what we've done is exactly the same as kate increasing the reach and increasing the depth of the and the relevance of the communication it goes back to an old story I heard once upon a time for the Second World War, when Swan Soap shut down and shifted over to manufacturing munitions through the period of the Second World War. And they weren't making soap, but they were the only people that continued to advertise on the back of ration cards all the way through the Second World War. And as soon as the war finished, Swan Soap had 100% market share. So it's thinking forward, thinking agile. Every week you have to think differently. Every week you have to adapt as far as what we are thinking. So it's that constant keeping on top of good communication internally, which we've learned to, to grow with, so that we know that everything we do, nobody can turn around to us and say, what on earth are you thinking of? So that we know that we actually we did think about it. Um, and looking forward to things that, in taking the surprises out of uh, what might happen next week for, for people thinking about the environment. You know, who would have imagined that the world would slow down even though we all feel crazy busy. But the whole planet out there, you know, who would imagine, I know it was a hoax, but who would imagine that there would be dolphins in the canals of Venice and that we would have clear skies and I can hear bird song rather than road noise outside my back door. I mean, so these are things to be treasured where we're becoming more conscientious about these items. And I think that'll maybe reflect through in travel where we'll be about that little bit more conscientious as well. So the relevance of that in anticipating that for the future is something that seems to have gained quite a lot of traction with our, our um, hit rates and our open rates and our click-throughs that uh, most definitely seems to have um, struck a chord. That's great. Um, and, and Kiri, how about you? What, what have you been sending out to agents that, that they can use from a marketing um, perspective? Yeah, well, we've kind of just been rolling with each week as it, as it comes, really. So when we first went into isolation, we came up with, well, it was a light bulb moment that I was thinking, okay, well, parents are at home, we've got the travel agents, we can't be putting out offers right now because the, the travel restrictions have just come into place. Um, so a late night light bulb moment came from Tom the Traveller. And uh, this was just a, a fictional personal travel agent, Tom the Traveller cartoon caricature. Um, which was there to give out daily travel trivia that our agents could put on the website and they could put on their social media so that they could talk to their customers and um, give them daily kind of trivia on travel and geography. So, you know, it was educational fun that we wanted to give them. So, you know, spot the difference at the airport, you know, Tom's lost his, uh, um, his passport in, you know, uh, in Punta Cana, can you find it at the beach? And then there were some more educational ones where they had to go on Google Earth and look for the pyramid. So, you know, it was just thinking of new initiatives like that where you have got parents who, you know, they do have this, they're, put, they're not on furlough. They're probably running out of activities to do. You know, we, we want our travel agents to step in and be like, well, do you know what? I'm still here. I can give you something that's, you know, going to be educational. And, you know, it worked out to be really well. We had... Um, some of our agents giving them to parent groups and schools 
Um, so one of our agents, Laura Bennett, she was giving it out to the schools and they were printing them off and sending them over to the students, which was good. We had them in the COVID-19 WhatsApp response groups as well, where they were kind of sending out activities for people to do, um, brownie clubs and, you know, all of that was good. And I think the main thing was that it was able to give that engagement on their social pages and through to their website, which they need right now because, you know, it's not the right time to be posting offers, but having that, you know, that touching point of having these activities, it just shows their caring side and, I think more importantly, from a marketing perspective, it keeps their name and their business at the forefront of their mind where you've got families, you know, you'd have a travel agent where their main demographic is families. Mm. So putting things like this on their pages and having it going out to them, it's nice and it's, it reconnects that relationship that they have together. Mm -hmm. And did any, have any of the agents reported back in terms of an increase in engagement and, and that kind of thing? Yeah, so, you know, I kind of cherry picked a few of them just to see how they're getting on because this is the problem. You see so much on social media when you're kind of managing pages and looking at their activity, you see all the good news, but you kind of want to see the stats behind it. But no, it was really good. We had one of our agents and um, just over a thousand followers on his page, but the combined reach was over 4,000. And, you know, in a situation where you're not posting offers, that's really, really helpful because all of, you know, no matter whatever industry somebody's in, they would have you know, reduced everything, kind of thinking of their next strategy of what they're going to do on social. So kind of just stepping in there and, you know, making sure that the posts were getting to the right people. It, it was good. And um, I think he had a, an increase of 19% engagement rate on those posts because, you, as you imagine, they're all online. They're all looking at them and doing the activities. And, you know, whether that's a parent's opportunity to have a, a cup of tea or a glass of pino it was here take the iPad <laughs> <for> this <laughs> absolutely so, um, um, it's just uh, things like that really great um and James I know you've been sending out newsletters as well have have um how, how's the open rate been there or, or generally what's what's the success been in terms of are there any stats you can share in marketing yeah. wise yeah um I mean the uh, from our point of view the open rate, we've, we've wanted to broaden the reach and, and increase the frequency of communication, but in, in a timely and relevant fashion, of course. Uh, as it's happened over the last six weeks, therefore, with new subscribers, we've doubled our reach, which is unheard of. I, I mean, I, I could wish I could do this every six weeks. Um, but um, in doubling the reach with, uh, with subscribers, we're now enjoying an open, open rate up also to 17.28%. Which is over, uh, which is with 10.13 pre-COVID. Mm. So I don't know whether these, how these relate to other people, but for us, it's still fantastic. Um, the click-through rate now, at the moment, uh, for the last uh, four weeks, has been 35.8 percent mm. uh, compared to 22.2 pre-COVID. So we're a whole 50 percent up as far as the relevance of the communication is concerned, mm. and our, our unsubscribed has dropped down from point of a percent to, to 0.18 of a percent right. so you know we're on tiny digits as far as the unsubscribes are concerned so as far as i'm concerned i'm thinking that everybody must be at home just with nothing else to do but look <laughs> it's fascinating yeah. as long as it's relevant and they're sharing it with other people and punching it out there and you put something through on linkedin and you suddenly find out that there's another thousand people it's gone out to that you never expected mm. so um in each of the different channels it's having a different different effect but as far as the emails where you're particularly asking that specific uh, example, we've been, we've surprised ourselves with the increased reach and the and the relevance of it. But you're quite right with uh, Kiri and uh, Kate both saying about specific campaigns and what they've done uh, to have a particularly pertinent campaign. Ours has been non-product related and it's been sector sector skills related. So on the leisure side, for example, we we launched a whole campaign about um, uh, matching people with holidays. For more than 50 years and we've just had cool photographs of uh, guys in their 50s with beards and tattoos all over them and the type of holidays that they would pick or wacky girls with their, uh, their hair and their makeup that you would uh, only ever see on, on tv <laughs> uh, and uh, and the type of place that they would go to and that seems to have gained some traction too okay good um and kate how about you what successes have you had obviously you've ramped up your um your facebook lives and things like that so yeah have, have you noticed an increase in engagement and open rates and, and the like 
Yeah, so um, similar sort of reaches, um, three three times higher. Um, my Facebook lives are reaching three times higher um, on a whole, um, which is equating to about 45% up on minutes watched um, and I did a Greek week um, and I did a family dinner we sat down as a family and ate Greek food we had Moussaka and we chatted about our holidays in Greece and that had 300% um, more watches um, as did uh, cooking our favourite Disney treats as well we, my daughter and I put some Disney ears on in the kitchen and just did 20 minutes making um, chicken legs and burgers um, and that went down really, really well as well. We had over 400% more watches on that than normal. Um, also, I've got a full appointment book for the first week back, if you can call it that. Um, I've been taking appointments um, saying, you know, I'm, I'm likely going to be busy. Would you like to be a VIP? Um, so I do have a full appointment book. And my list has grown as well as James is about 13% in 30 days. So um, that building my audience is definitely working. Brilliant. So it sounds, speaking to you all, it sounds as though marketing activity is, is almost ramped up for, for a lot of you in, in many ways. So do you have any tips in terms of or how often are you communicating with your clients? How often are you sending out those newsletters or posting on social? Um, Kiri, how often are you advising your agents to, to be doing um, their posting and their mail outs? Well, it is in terms of our central CRM, we've reduced it down to just doing... Um, just one e-shot a week going through to their databases. Um, it gives the, op the opportunity for the PTAs to subscribe into that if they're not ready or, you know, I think what we need to think is that as much as, you know, I can sit here with my marketing hat on, I've got to be, you know, thinking of how they want to run their race. They've got their own businesses. They want to market in the way that they, they see feasible and what they're comfortable with. Um, you know, where you've got some agents that might not feel comfortable at the minute just going out with office because they feel like they're still, you know, trying to juggle a lot of their customers' rebooks or, you know, they're still waiting back from tour operators. So to have a flood of inquiries to come through right now just might not be the time. As great as that sounds, they need to be in the right place before those inquiries come in, as much as it can help boost confidence. Mm. So, you know, we have reduced our central... Um, marketing going out but you know if you asked me this question last week I would have said you know what we're, we're really gonna just keep to that but as of last week we were up 53% for our new bookings so you know we had a phenomenal hmm. week with new bookings which was all led off 22% um, of it was led off social media for Santorini and um, Iceland and some of the bucket list destinations Mm -hmm. So as much as we're kind of saying, okay, well, this is our strategy, it's moving so quickly mm -hmm. and with more people being at home and the weather taking a bit of a turn at the minute, this might be an opportunity now for us to just keep with our main marketing being as it is, but where we can see pockets of opportunity on social, we might as well run with it because we're seeing such good results and, you know, the customers want to get away, whether that's, you know, the end of this year or for next year you know as much as we all kind of feel it they want to have something to look forward to so we don't want to restrict that and say this is the marketing tools that we've got we just want to give them something which they'll they'll flow with really so yeah it, it's dependent on them but you know it's moving so quickly we want to give them all the tools we don't want to have them left behind and as home working agents they've got the opportunity to do it they can run their own race whether that's you know a hundred inquiries overnight or you know whether that's just dipping in for a few uh, a few scheduled posts to help bring in inquiries a week it's just giving them the, the tools to do it um and james how about you how often are you posting things out on social sending out those newsletters well we've uh, we've increased the frequency to weekly and we're not going to go any further than that i agree with Kiri, really uh, anything more than weekly seems to be overkill um, and I'm sure we've not tested it because even fine. Maybe daily would work. I've no idea. We just don't dare do it. We haven't got the guts to, to go that far. Um, you know, for me, I think if I receive something more than weekly, well, I'm at home. My inbox is already flooded with a load of stuff of people telling me how clever they are. So um, I don't need that. And I'm, uh, so what in, uh, really struck us is the open rates and the click-through rates to recognise the relevance of what we're saying. 
but it's, it's the relevant channels as well, different communications through channel and the segmentation as well of the, of the customer base because everybody's an individual out there. So uh, uh, giving people, taking the surprise out of what can happen tomorrow makes you appear um, well informed and a useful source and as such therefore people come to you for advice and we're in the advice business. So I'm with Kiri on that one. We certainly don't go more than, more than weekly through any channel. Fine. Mm -hmm. Kate, how about you? Um, so yeah, I'm weekly in terms of newsletter, but I'm daily on LinkedIn, um, Instagram and Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. I try and use, um, Helen Pritchard is fantastic um, LinkedIn marketer and she talks about four pillars of content. So I look at testimonials, stories, um, a call to action and a video. Um, so um, I don't use all four every single day, but I do try and post daily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so one question that we've had from a few of our readers is about getting the tone right right now um, to ensure that you're still approaching things with sensitivity. Have you got any tips for that or any examples of how you're, you're sort of balancing, balancing that being entertaining but also being sensitive? Um, James, should we start with you? Be authentic. That's a critical mm. element for me. Uh, be yourself, be authentic, be who you are, because that's the, that's the person that everybody wants to deal with and who they're, who they're wishing to deal with. Um, even now, when we talk, we're talking over this and streaming, um, making mistakes, saying, saying too many ums, but talking it up sometimes, actually, funny enough, it just lend, lends a bit of hum, humanity to it all. And we're all in the same boat. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kiri, how about you? What have you been advising? Yeah, I think when it comes to, you know, the home workers, it's, you know, people like people at the end of the day. And that's one of the main things I like to reiterate when I'm talking to my agents is that when it comes to communicating, you've got the right platforms to get your personality across and have those personal relationships. So, you know, when it is right for you, when you want to start looking at getting those new bookings in, it's about using those soft tones, keeping that emotional connection and you know just getting your personality across you know behind your brand is your face and you know like Kate's doing those live videos and you know you posting pictures of what travel activities you're doing with your families or you know destination inspiration those types of things is quite soft marketing that will you know that might transpire into inquiries or you know you might get extra followers on your pages so using those soft touches of saying you know I'm here, my, my business door is virtually open and you know, I'm here for a time that's right for you when you're ready. Those types of soft tones just to get your personality across and hopefully that way customers will connect more with you and you know, it's more fruitful. Mm -hmm. Kate, would you say, would, would you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with all of that. The only thing I would add is um, transparency and, and empathy as well. Like I've had travel plans cancelled as well. The global mm -hmm. conference to Dubai, I'm gutted that's cancelled. I was supposed to be in Malta last week mm -hmm. um, with Holiday Companions. And, and, and just throwing that empathy out there of how frustrating the situation is for you personally and, and try and relate to people on that weather uh, on that level that weather that level um, and then finally I think I think we're starting to see a bit of a tide certainly on LinkedIn people are, are looking forward with their businesses now um, and so you know everyone's starting to look at the end I know we're not at the end of lockdown but people are trying to scramble and see it and um, so maybe change shift the tone further afield and looking forward as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so are any of you posting offers right now or Kiri are any of your agents posting them? Yeah we are, We're, we had it last week, it was just phenomenal and you know we, we had our team meeting this morning and we were just talking about the successes of it and I think it is all based on confidence, you just need someone to you know put their toe in the water and go for it and you know right now you know we've kind of done the soft marketing around destination inspiration and you know the types of services that you get from your personal travel agent but there is an appetite right now for people to be booking holidays and you know we did a, um, a customer survey where we um, we had a 1583 respondents that came back from it to talk about how their travel plans will change once um, restrictions have been lifted and we saw there was more of an interest, there was 14% more interest in adventuring and touring 
So, you know, those types of offers for 2021 and more than bucket list destinations, as well as doing, you know, some of the all inclusives is, you know, that's the type of things that we're putting on at the minute. And, you know, it's working well to have such good results mm. last week um, mm. overtaking our rebooks as well. It, it's really positive. And I think that's probably the guidance that we want to give out to our agents at the minute that, you know, well, when you're ready, there is a market that's sweeping up these inquiries because, you know, now's the time for you to go for it. Okay. Um, and James, Kate, have you started posting offers? Just, what are you thinking about that? Um, I don't actually um, post that many offers traditionally anyway. Um, it's not being price led isn't something necessarily part of my marketing strategy. So um, nothing's really changed um, as far as I'm concerned from that. Right. And James, how about me on Valley Travel? I'm not as brave as Kiri, I'm afraid. So uh, from my point of view, we're not going there with the offers as yet. What we are finding is that the bookings are coming in. They're starting to trickle in now. Mm. So I'm not sure. Whether, I don't know whether it's the marketing that's doing this or, or whether it's offer base that's doing it, but the inquiries are coming in. Mm. I'm still worried about alienating those that are not booking at this point in time um, and making sure that we're coming across as being in the help business with the right advice and uh, the best guidance. And then those individuals that want to turn around and engage are going to pick, pick us to engage with as in regards to is it too early, should I be looking, can I be, can I be thinking about these things. And we are engaging with them and, make, and making the bookings. Only handfuls at this point in time. Uh, and business travel is still the oil industry moving around. It took uh, four days to get somebody to Tenerife uh, the other day, rather, on a, rather than a four hour journey. And they were sleeping on airport mm. floors to be able to get there. And then when they got there, they got isolated and quarantined, so they couldn't get onto their ship for 14 days, the captain of the ship. So, you know, it was uh, an oil ship, and it was kind of um, challenging from the business and the leisure side. So, uh, I hats off to Kiri for going for it at this point in time. There's got to be pioneers and leaders, and, uh, and I will be uh, sitting in the wings rooting for you because we're all wanting to follow that. <laughs> Um, is there anything that hasn't worked marketing wise that you've tried since this crisis or have there been any challenges that you've had to face? Um, Kate, should we start with you there? Uh, yeah, um, so one of my Facebook lives absolutely tanked. It was a competition. Um, I, I, I kind of pushed to my clients that I believe there's a cruise line for everyone. And I, I kind of invited people to test me on that, to come and uh, test me. I offered them a prize for taking part. That absolutely tanked. But um, I learned from that in that, you know, um, giving people notice and maybe setting up an event would be um, the way to do that going forward. And um, travel virtually is starting to lose momentum. So it's time to switch that up again. Like I say, I'm going to use to look forward now and um, looking at end of 2020 and 2021 I think sometimes it can be easy to fall into a bit of a trap of well X has worked before on Facebook so I'll just keep doing it and um, but I'm just trying to keep switching it up and trying different media and post styles and different times of day and things like that right um, and James keeping everybody on message has been a challenge for us in the early days we, we uh, uh, had to lock into it quite quickly because of course as soon as everybody's at home and they're all like this and like this um, then suddenly there's a, gr um, a greater propensity for one-to-one -one communication and it needs to be on song, on message, with the appropriate tone and not everybody gets it right and we're the comp as a company we have uh, a company tone that we need to follow so mm -hmm. from that point of view it's been the interesting challenge in the early days that we never anticipated is that where there's suddenly a gap in communication everybody feels it you need to make sure that it's filled with the right communication mm -hmm. Um, and Kiri, how about you and, and your agents? Um, I think probably for us, the challenge has been on the unknown. So, you know, when COVID and the travel ban first came into place, we were thinking, okay, well, destination borders, which, where should we be marketing? And, you know, we, we made that transition thinking, okay, well, if it's not going to be long haul, it's going to be on, on Europe. And then, okay, well, things got a bit trickier there. And then, okay, well, uh, us identifying that there's a UK market but that unknown of when people are being able to travel, giving, you know, the right departure dates and, you know, getting that, you know, the key information really and giving them accurate, you know, question, answers to questions which they have based on the unknown. That's something which we find quite challenging. So as much as we can look at 2021 with all of our type of product, it's just thinking, OK, well, you know, what is the opportunity that's here for this year? And where is that going to lie? Because it's it's changing, and naturally, 
we want to be able to respond to people and to give them what they want and you know give them that inspirational holidays because that's what you know our agents are all about it's that tailor-made personal service um, but it's just that factor of the unknown and not knowing when all of this is going to be over when we're going to be able to travel long haul or you know have those types of holidays so that's the main kind of barrier at the minute okay um so budgets are inevitably going to get smaller once this is all over um in fact they probably are already for some people but um marketing is arguably going to be more important than ever to sort of stand out from the crowd so what what should people's priorities be marketing wise and what will your priorities be once this is all over um kate should we start with you yeah it's very much going to be a precision approach so I know my client I know my ideal client avatar and it's you know being where they are and making sure I'm in front of them and um, it's also making my money go further so with retargeting um, I, um, on Facebook and Google and also nurture and re-engagement programs as well making sure that those people that do join the mailing list and nurtured into a relationship with me and then anyone that starts to drop away you know an, an aim of re-engaging them just making that money go further as you know as much as possible mm -hmm. um kiri have, have you started to sort of think about that and, and what the priorities will be once this is all over yeah and you know right now as well what we're talking to our agents is about leveraging the power of digital and social media so you know at the beginning of the webinar when i was talking about you know it being free at the minute and you know they're not having to put budget behind to do a certain post mm -hmm. they can leverage that and you know having those personal connections and building on referrals and reviews and getting that celebrity status almost in their local area and having that you know oh that's the the local travel lady or man status that they can pass on that will help really for kind of marketing you know they're not in a position at the minute against government guidance to be going out and doing local marketing as much as everyone's ramping up together but it's you know just doing things that they can you know get some extra likes on their pages getting a bit more exposure talking about the different things that they can offer that are non-sales wise to their to the customers really um, and that will that will help really kind of long in the wrong long run mm -hmm. um James, what's what's the priority going to be for, for me on Valley Travel? And metrics and the data, really. We're going to be uh, we're looking at return on investment. Everything at the end of the day, every every pound we spend has to come back twenty five fold. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, it's the, the metrics and the data and the return on investment is going to be critical. And also, if we're a good business coming out of this crisis, um, it, we're stronger and faster and better and smarter then we're going to be picking and choosing our suppliers very carefully and they're a good source of uh, a teamwork really we're all a team in the same supply chain so um, we're working closely with our suppliers uh, ourselves as well in anticipation now as to how we're going to be able to sort this pipeline out make sure that we're we're relevant make sure we're not just creating a load of white noise as we come out the other end of this uh, and, and ensuring the, the return on investment that we get in, in every area spent for all the different channels in each of the different disciplines and, and, and divisions is, is appropriate and timely and relevant. So um, it's return on investment, data and leveraging the supply chain for those partnerships that are going to be of value in the future. Mm -hmm. um, Kiri, I heard that um, you did a pub quiz with some of the PTAs last week, was it? Um, how did that go? And, and um, would you recommend that agents do something similar with their clients, something a bit sort of more lighthearted, perhaps? Yeah, I think just to give a bit of background behind the pub quiz, we, um, every Friday, what we do with, with all of our personal travel agents, we open up our virtual bar. Um, so half four on a Friday, uh, we send out our uh, an equivalent to a Zoom um, conference call where all our agents log on, they bring their favourite drink and um, we just have a bit of a catch up. It's nothing work related, it's nothing to do with refunds, processes, anything like that. It's just for us to have a catch up and think, do you know what, we've got through another week, we're going to get through next week, but let's just have a catch up and you know, those phone calls, they start at half four, but they end up quite late <laughs> going into the day. We're missing a, a TTG event at the minute. <laughs> so um, yeah, so we did that and then uh, we came up to the conclusion, let's do a pub quiz. So we did the pub quiz one day, 
Um, yeah, we had 40 people do it and uh, yeah, we had some good fun with it. So what we did is uh, afterwards, the agents were saying, you know what, this is great, we'd love to do this for our customers. So we made a PDF pack um, for them to do and it was all travel related questions. We had a bit of uh, fun in there as well, a bit of tongue in cheek with some of the questions with airport codes. I won't go into too much detail with it. Um, but yeah, it was just something nice which they could give back. At the minute, everyone's doing pub quizzes and you know, it was just another way to get everyone together. So it was just another tool that we could give out to the agents that they could do with their customers and send out. And one of our agents actually, she, um, she lives in a cul-de-sac and every weekend she goes live on her page and does a pub quiz. And it's really nice because you can see the family sat outside their front doors She's got her little microphone and she's got a glass of wine and she's just mm -hmm. doing the pub quiz with everyone and you can see them all there kind of waving their hand up when they get the question right and <laughs> you know it, it's nice it's another nice way you know for us to talk about travel related things although she does a bit of a mixture of you know travel related ones or you know fill in the missing lyric and things like that it's just another way that you know we're getting our agents out there and just doing something different and mm -hmm. you know just doing something together you know once you have a happy bunch you know you, you, it's kind of just saying that we are a family and we're there to support you really um okay so i've heard we've heard from quite a few agency staff members who are on furlough currently and i know that quite a few are doing online training courses and things like that in their downtime um, are there any marketing courses or websites or magazines that you'd recommend for furloughed staff or even for agents that have a bit of downtime and want to uh, boost their knowledge? Um, James, should we start with you? Um, we've, uh, we've got a, a couple that we follow up with, but what we've found is, uh, funny enough, that reach volunteering has turned out to be a great area for us to understand and uh, for us to engage with for a reason as well and actually a uh, bit of payback and people realizing how to be able to communicate effectively for a good purpose rather than just training for our business mm -hmm. so it, we found that reachvolunteering.org.uk has turned out to be a very strong uh, with we're ambassadors for that now has turned out to be a very strong message that we can send to our existing people that they can uh, do something learn a new, a new skill learn all about the marketing for their in, themselves and engaging with the outside world realize that it's okay to try and top it up occasionally um, but also mm -hmm. do some good while they're at it so there's a few yeah. good factor for that of a bit of payback it, a payback here um or pay forward really paying it forward to the outside world is something that we're engaged in actively mm -hmm. okay um kate how about you yes yeah, so i mentioned helen pritchard she's linkedin yeah. she does a five-day challenge but also noble business school she's great around building your brand and um, danny and liz of the vip life atomic by Andrew and Pete, they do some fantastic work with content, especially on social media, and um, great on YouTube. So if you look for Andrew and Pete on uh, YouTube, and Janet Murray um, for building your audience online, and um, all of these guys deliver some great free content, and then you can subscribe to things as well. Okay, brill. Kiri, any suggestions? Yeah, um, some of the Google um, e email marketing courses that they do, a lot of them are free, some of them you do have to pay for. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the Facebook blueprint, you've got reality training from a marketing perspective when you're dealing with inquiries. I think one of the things that I found for our guys and what I launched last week was a, a business spring clean. Because sometimes when you've got some of these online courses, you know, give it to one of our travel agents and you know, ask them to sell a holiday, they'll do it without thinking. But then sometimes when you've got a lot of the technical language and terminology, it's quite hard to decipher. So um, what I did last week was I did a, a business spring clean, which kind of goes through areas which they probably want a deeper understanding on. So for example, if you want to talk about your inactives in your database, what does that actually mean? And you know, what does a bounce mean? Those types of things, which is, is quite basic from a marketing perspective, but for a travel agent, it just gives them a bit of a deeper understanding. So there's, there's a lot out there. It's just kind of getting the main ones out there and just giving it to them in a, a way that they'll understand in the language. Mm. Bit of a jargon buster type. Mm. Thing. Yeah. Okay, all right. And I've noticed the time and I think we've run slightly over. So I'm just going to ask you one final question, which is just uh, wanting to ask about your hopes for the future, really, and, and what you think the landscape is going to look like, the travel marketing landscape. Um, James. Oh, I hope this makes us all much more conscientious travellers. 
I hope that it uh, helps us to be able to think a little bit more about those around us. I hope it enables us to be more, to be kinder to those around us. I know it's a fast paced competitive world, but to be a little conscientious about where we're going, what we're doing, how we, how we behave, uh, how we relate to the outside world, looking after ourselves, looking after those around us and looking after the planet. So mm -hmm. the environmental issues I think are going to become all, more, all the more relevant uh, as part and parcel rather than the be all and end all. But certainly there's no reason why we can't have it all. Mm -hmm. Kiri, how about you? Yeah, I'm just I'm hoping for a bit of togetherness really. I hope this, you know, this all just brings a bit of adventure and, you know, just brings that wanderlust to life. You know, we, we're bombarded with different types of things on Netflix, on, you know, on TV with all these adventure programs. But, you know, now it's probably a time when people have a bit of a shake up and think, do you know what, I'm actually going to book that type of holiday because, you know, I really want to go for it. And, you know, it's with everyone coming together, especially for our home workers, it's a good time for everyone to realise to support your local businesses and, you know, support the people around you because now, you know, it's, we keep saying that unprecedented times, but it is. And, you know, giving that support to your, your local travel business is what you need right now. So hopefully that togetherness will, will come together. Mm -hmm. And Kate, final thought from you? Um, yeah, well, just to re-emphasise what they, uh, what the guys have already said, really that idea of togetherness, multi-generation holidays, I can see being quite a big one um, as people try and get together again, like physically, um, and the more adventurous style holidays. And I think as travel agents, we've really shown our worth in the last six weeks, you know, being there 20, literally 24-7 crisis management and helping people. I think, you know, we can really use that and and, and, and move that forward even more and, and get that one-to-one -one service um, really prevalent. Mm -hmm. Okay, brilliant. Well, I think that's about all we've got time for today. Apologies for running slightly over. Uh, thank you so much to all of my panellists. Uh, you've all been really, uh, there's been loads of insight and tips there. It's actually been really in, inspiring to talk to you as well um, and hear about all the creative bits and bobs you've all been doing. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for your hard work. Um, just looking on, on Facebook and we've had lots of brilliant comments as well. So thank you so much um, for that. Uh, and yes, thanks for everyone for tuning in. We'll be back again next Tuesday for another Agent Matters panel. So we'll see you there. Uh, Thank thanks you. everyone and look after yourselves. You too, Abra. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye.